so what's up guys uh, now I bought a power supply a computer ATXT power supply uh, from a local store and I knew that it was not working still I bought it for the sake of a project but uh, still I thought I'd give it a try to check if it's working because a working power supply is like gold for any electronics uh, you know enthusiast so uh, let me show you this is the power supply that I bought it's I don't know some model Beetle BT450 so uh, yeah I hooked it up to the I hooked the PC cord to it and found out that whenever I switch on the power supply the exhaust fan briefly runs and stops so uh, well what I did next was sort of trial and error now as you can see this ribbon over here has got a green wire so as soon as you short the green wire with any of the ground that is the black wire the power supply is supposed to uh, turn on uh, what I did was uh, I opened up the case and you know sort of keep kept on shorting the green wire with the black ones uh, rapidly like I'll short it I'll remove the ground I'll short it again and after some cycles I found the um, power supply actually worked so I did a bit of research and found that most of the power supplies come with some sort of uh, voltage protection like over voltage protection under voltage protection and uh, I figured out that uh, it must be some some protection that is uh, kicking in before the power supply is turned on so let me show you the insides uh, and yeah before you open it up I am going to make a disclaimer so it's better you read that first okay so here I am at the data sheet of SG6109 and it's manufactured by Scylla and Microelectronics never heard of it before but you can see in the applications itself it says switching mode power supplies that is SMPS so I guess it might be a common IC now, there are some features and stuff but what I'm interested in is the you know other in fact input ports uh, input in the sense that are used for uh, you know maintaining the voltage and monitoring if there's a low voltage or high voltage so yeah here we are now here, here you can see the pin numbers pin name and this I over here represents if it is an input output port. so uh, jump to the data sheet and find all the input ports uh, couple over here some of them over here okay and write it down somewhere in your notebook or whatever because you are going to need it uh, so once you are done with that uh, just uh, switch on your multimeter because now we are going to have to make some measurements So make a little table with uh, all the input pins and a column for voltage for three conditions. First when it's off that is when the green wire was shorted to ground. Uh, the second one when it was on uh, and I like my power supply turned on whenever I 
you know repeatedly shorted green wire with the ground and once it started working i'd keep it shorted to the ground and the third one is when there's no input and remember that your power supply will be hooked to ac mains while you are taking these readings so please 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 be careful ah uh, okay so once you have got these readings you can compare what's uh, like what value could be messing up with your power supply in my case the off column and the no input column didn't do much like didn't give me much of a hint but the on column for the sixth pin it was dropped to minus 0.32 when it was on but when it was off or when there was no input it was sucked up to 5.0 volts uh, i thought there might be some problem with the six the sense at the sixth pin so uh, let us go and take a look at the data sheet what the sixth pin exactly do so we are back at the data sheet and here you can see pin number six is nvp which says the protection input for negative output okay so uh, what does that ex exactly means within the data sheet itself i found what it is negative voltage protection nvp so it is designed to provide under voltage protection for negative voltage output overload and short circuit can cause under voltage of negative voltage output when the voltage of nvp is higher than 2.1 volt blah 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 so uh yeah uh, the thing is first i won't be using this power supply with computer uh, okay that's something i i guess i'll include in the video at the very beginning so i won't be bothered about the voltage of minus 12 volts because anyway it supplies just uh, some 500 milliamps at max and i don't need that for my projects and stuff so what i'll do is uh I'll clip the minus 12 volt, uh, you know, output from the circuit, and try to sort of bypass this protection. Uh, so here you can see the formula for negative voltage protection, but I didn't use that. What I did was went to the circuit diagram. So yeah, it's here. Okay, now. There should be NVP somewhere here. CCP is on NVP, yeah. So NVP is connected to 75 kilo ohm resistor, followed by a 100 kilo ohm resistor, which is then given to minus 12 volts. So what I thought was, why not bypass the 100 kilo ohm resistor? Okay, so well, I did that because there's already a 75 kilo ohm resistor. So even if I shot the 100 kilo ohm there shouldn't be something horribly going wrong so I took the risk and I shorted this uh, 100 kilo ohm resistor on my power supply now you'll have to search for that 100 kilo ohm resistor you'll have to uh, use your continuity tester to see where are the tracks going and stuff it's uh, not easy I'll tell you like not that difficult as well but it'll take you decent uh, around say 20 minutes and it's worth it yeah so uh, just heat up your solder rod meanwhile you're trying to find out your 100 kilo ohm resistor or whatever it is and just short it provided that your case is the same as mine if your case is different you'll have to devise your own way so that's what I did to uh, you know make the power supply work and does it work well of course yes that's why <laughs> i'm making this video for uh, this video is also uh, i think important because i've seen many people ask on um, all over the internet like their power supply runs for a second or so and then stops so might be this might be the reason and again don't use it with a computer uh, it's not going to be good f either for your computer or your power supply uh, you can though use it to power your projects and that would be interesting so let's see the power supply work so once you are done with your soldering job or whatever repair you had to do uh, get yourself a jumper wire and try shorting it uh, with like try shorting the green pin with the ground now and hopefully it should work
Now be careful, my like in my case the power supply is still without the case and it is dangerous. So I guess I can't show you in the same frame, but while well, it works and it works like brand new. Nah, I'll show you an example of load. Okay, so here I have my load. It's a indicator bulb, or I don't know what it is, but its resistance is around two ohms, two ohms or four ohms. I don't remember exactly. So yeah, whatever it is. Now, now here I have a source of plus twelve volt. That's the yellow wire and ground. So I'll hook it up. And show you how it does and in fact this power supply is very powerful so please don't short it again or you'll have you'll lose it once again provided that you were able to repair it yeah that is sort of mobile but yeah so yeah it works the power supply claims that can successfully output uh, 22 amps of currents on the 12 volt rail so that's a lot of power so yeah that's it uh, hope you guys like the video uh, I'm not sure if this video is going to help you uh, you know repair your own power supply but that's this video is more to you know motivate you guys so that you find your own ways to sort of <laughs> repair it for yourself uh, that's it thanks for you I'll see you later bye and yeah before going uh, hit that like button if you really like the video that's all and subscribe to me if you want more uh, DIY repairs or whatever it was yeah bye